Will my Italian fiancé metabolise pasta better than me? We put on continuous glucose monitors to find out. These measure our blood sugar levels 24-7 and we couldn't believe the results. The goal is to have the most stable blood sugar and whoever spikes more is going to have to do the dishes tonight. We decided to make spaghetti carbonara with garlic, olive oil, butter, five eggs, rocket, spinach, ham, a dash of wine and the carb sauce, spaghetti. Will her Italian genetics give a better glucose response than my English Chinese genetics when eating Italy's favorite dish? I hope not because I hate doing the washing up. Let's cook. But you may be asking, why is it important to keep our blood sugar, aka blood glucose levels stable? You may associate measuring blood sugars with people who have diabetes, but there's an emerging trend of measuring blood sugars in healthy individuals. The idea is that even people who don't have diabetes can benefit from having stable blood sugar. There's evidence that it could be a good preventative measure against developing cardiovascular and metabolic disease. Also, having a stable blood sugar can help stabilize your mood, energy, and appetite throughout the day. If you've ever had a big carby or sugary meal, you may have noticed a crash in energy or a reactive hunger afterwards, which is in part due to blood glucose levels spiking fast, then subsequently falling fast as your body fights to keep the levels stable. However, the way people metabolize different foods varies greatly between individuals, with factors like genetics, gut microbiome, and body composition all playing a part. What spikes one person's glucose may not spike another's, and we wanted to see if her Italian genetics would outperform mine. Although I do question the degree of her Italianness, given the way she cooks pasta. <laughs> the pasta you know that is illegal in italy we served it up weighing the same amount, then checked our blood glucose. We started off essentially the same. Hers was 4.9 and mine 5.1. Time to get eating. Immediately post meal. Mine's already taken off to 6 immediately after the meal. Italian fiancé remains at a healthy 5.3. This isn't looking promising for me. To keep it fair, we had to do the same thing post dinner for 2 hours. So we sat on our butts watching Netflix. Two hours later, let's check our results. Me. Glucose went up to 6.7. I thought it would be higher considering how carby pasta is. Italian fiance, glucose 7.6. So Italians don't metabolize pasta better and I don't have to do the dishes. But why did this happen? Our experiment wasn't particularly scientific and there are a million and one confounding variables that could have affected this one-off result. Here are four examples. One, she's smaller than me and we ate the same amount of pasta. Smaller people need smaller portions. Two, Exercise has a huge effect on stabling blood glucose because when muscles are used, they take up glucose. I had worked out early in the day and she hadn't. Three, we watched a fairly scary Black Mirror episode and stress is something that will spike your blood glucose. Although I was probably more stressed than her. Four, I'm uncertain how Italian she really is given her blasphemous <laughs> pasta cooking method. But we can agree that glucose response is highly individual and the only way to know for sure how a food is affecting you is to measure it for yourself. They haven't sponsored this video, but if you're based in Australia, you can use Vively. They're the only company in Australia to do CGMs for non-diabetics, as far as I'm aware. I got in contact with them and they've kindly provided me with an affiliate link to share. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments what you want us to try next. And if you've ever been curious whether brown rice is actually healthier than white rice, I run the glucose experiment in this next video. I'll see you there.